Well, good morning. Good morning. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Good morning. good morning. All right. It's cold outside. We've got to warm up in here. Just thankful that everybody's here this morning. We want to welcome you. Excited to be in the Lord's house. And if you're a guest this morning, thank you for coming. We're always excited that you're here, and we hope you feel at home. Uh, we do want to connect with you and see how we can serve you and pray for you, uh, get to know you better. So we have what are called connect cards, and they're in the foyer or over in our welcome center, which is just through this door. And you can grab one of those, and after the service this morning, if you'll go over there and take those cards with you, there'll be somebody there waiting for you, and they have a gift for you. So thank you guys for being here this morning. And if you're watching at home, thank you for being here. Just excited to be able to be together and uh, worship together in the Lord's house. And I just want to send out a reminder, Children's Church is going to be dismissed this morning after the choir sings. So just so you'll notice, before everybody gets up and takes off, that we'll sing, the, ch the church choir will sing, and then the Children's Church, uh, Children's Church will be dismissed after that. And I have a verse to share with you this morning. It's Ephesians 5, verse 20. It says, Giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we know we're coming up on Thanksgiving, but I tell you, that should be our mindset every day being thankful to the Lord for everything he does for us and everything he will do for us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, thank you again today for just blessing us, Lord, to be able to come to your house and worship you. Thank you for the time of this service that's coming, Lord. Uh, let our hearts be open now to hear your word, to hear your message, Lord. And let us take that and receive it and use it this week, Lord, to uh, make others know who you are around us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to see you. Glad to see the choir here. I don't have to stand up here by myself. Good to have some backup. Uh, this morning's song is Count Your Blessings. And like you said, Thanksgiving's coming up. And uh, we're so thankful for what God done even before we were saved. So we just want to sing and uh, praise the Lord this morning. So let us stand as we sing. <laughs> When upon life's billows you are tempted, tossed. When you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened with the load of care? Does the cross seem heavy we were called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the day goes by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. When you look at others with the land and gold, Think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or the home or high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings, we what God has done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to the journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Amen.
Good morning. So wonderful to see you here on this beautiful Lord's Day. Cold, but it's beautiful, isn't it? And we are glad you're here to worship our great God together. We're so excited to, to uh, worship God, and truly, we should be thankful, because every day He blesses us, and we could just spend so long counting our blessings and how good God is to us, and we just want to give Him praise, and we have much to praise Him for, for what God is doing right here at Red Mountain, and I want to start by saying praise the Lord for uh, Janet Stone. She joined the church last Sunday, so we give God praise for her joining the church last Sunday. We're so thankful to have her officially part of the family here, and then I also want to praise the Lord for what's going to happen at the end of the service this morning. Uh, Jared and Alyssa Brooks are being baptized this morning, and so we're so thankful for what God is doing in their life. We give him praise. And then uh, just to give you some updates on some folks we've been praying for, uh, we asked you last Sunday to pray for Bobby Seagroves. This is Mavis's uh, mother-in-law and Alyssa's great-grandmother. Um, she was in ICU last Sunday, and she came home Monday. So prayer works. And, uh, you know, Bobby's doing better. She's got a long way to go she, to get her strength back from having pneumonia. Uh, but well, she is improving, so we thank you for praying. The family is so appreciative of you praying for, for Bobby. So just want to encourage you to continue praying for her as she gets her strength back. And then we have shared with you how many boxes we collected for Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Ministry and showed you that picture of 170 and told you more were coming in. Our final total of what came in from Red Mountain Baptist Church was 185 boxes. Isn't God good? Amen. Our goal was 150, and uh, we never have collected 150 before, but y'all greatly surpassed the goal and just blew it out of the water. So we give God praise, but I do want to encourage you to continue praying for each kid that's going to receive those boxes as they're down in Charlotte or in Boone. I'm not sure which processes, processing center they went to. Over the next several weeks, all these boxes will be processed from all over the nation and then begin to be shipped overseas and, and to reach all these children. So just pray that God will work in the life of these children, their families, their villages to come to the same knowledge of Jesus Christ. But thank you for giving so generously, and, and I just give God praise for 185 boxes that you gave. Uh, and, and just uh, also another answer to prayer, uh, it's good to see Don Garrett was here Wednesday night, good to see him here Sunday morning. He's doing better uh, with his pneumonia, getting better and getting stronger each day, but it's going to be a while for him to get his full strength back. So just want to encourage you to continue praying for Don if you would. So Don, how you feeling this morning, brother? What's that? You're getting there. All right. So as long as you're getting there and not regressing. So we're so thankful. So continue praying for Don as he continues to get his strength back and just heal from having pneumonia. And thank you for praying for, for him. And then if you would pray for Steve DeBlock. Steve is going tomorrow to have a procedure done on his back. Uh, he's been in intense back pain. And tomorrow they're going to do a little slip, put a camera in, and then do an injection and find out exactly where they need to do the injection. So just pray that everything goes well tomorrow. He's got to basically lay still for a week to recover. Um, and so he can't get out and do stuff and everything, but just uh, pray that this takes care of the issues that he is having with his back. Uh, you know, Steve is an answer to prayer. God's done a great work in his life and all these medical problems he's had, you know, for months, and now here's another one, and we know God's going to take care of him, and we just pray that it goes well tomorrow. So continue praying for Steve, if you would, and if you would, continue praying for Pastor Cameron's brother, James. Um, uh, Pastor Cameron shared with you how he had the defibrillator and pacemaker put in. Well, he went home this week, and, and he actually ended up passing out twice, and so he went to the hospital there at home and they figured it was a combination of his medicine but also his heart's not beating fast enough it's beating too slow so when he got up too quickly didn't have the oxygen needed he passed out um, so they figured that out and he's going to follow up with the doctors in a couple weeks at Duke but we know he needs a heart transplant so we're praying for the right time for that for the right heart and as I shared with you before pray for that donor someone's got to be a donor we want to pray for the salvation of that donor as well so just continue praying for uh, Pastor Cameron's brother James if you would as he's dealing with his heart issues and God just continues to watch over him and take care of him. And then if you would pray for Lee Watson and her family, uh, her uncle passed away this week so we do want to remember them in our prayers. The funeral is tomorrow. Uh, he was in hospice care and, and uh, he is, he's a believer so he's healed, he's whole, he's in heaven with Jesus and we rejoice that he's doing a whole lot better now than he was on this earth but we know he's missed so we do want to pray for Lee and her family and pray for the services tomorrow. Let's pray together. Gracious Father you are so good to us. And you bless us each and every day, and, and truly, we do need to take stock of our blessings. We need to count our blessings and, and just be thankful every day for, for who you are, but also how good you are to us. 
And what I've just shared here is an example of your goodness, of how you, how you bless us. You've blessed us with, with new members. We've blessed us with seeing people get, give their life to Jesus, Lord. We're going to see an example of that as they get baptized. Alyssa and Jarrett this morning getting baptized. What a great testimony, a profession of their faith as they go through these baptismal waters. And we thank you for what you're doing in their life. And we thank you that you have called them to be a part of the family here at Red Mountain. We thank you for calling Janet last Sunday to join the church as well and transfer her membership here and be a part of the family here, Lord. And we give you praise for just how you're touching lives and changing lives for all eternity. And Father, we give you praise that you hear our prayer request. And, and as we pray out to you on behalf of these people that we love and care for, you answer them. To think last Sunday we were praying for Bobby Seagroves as she was in ICU with uh, AFib and, and not breathing well because she has pneumonia. And then she came home on Monday. Father, that's just an answer to prayer. And we give you praise. And I thank you that she's continuing to do well. And we just pray you continue to strengthen her body as she gets over the pneumonia. And pray your uh, healing hand be upon her, Father. We thank you that Don's able to be here with us this morning. It's good to see him back Wednesday night. And I thank you that, that he is improving, although it's slow. And we just pray you continue to strengthen him and heal his body for the pneumonia that he had, Father. And Lord, we just thank you for the generosity of your people to give 180 shoe boxes to reach children that we have never met before, Father. Father, this is the most we've ever collected, and we give you praise because this is what you have done. And Lord, I just pray for each child that will receive a shoebox, not just these 185, but all the children that receive shoeboxes. I pray, Holy Spirit, you prepare their hearts to be receptive to the gospel because we know they'll see the toys, they'll see the toothbrushes, they'll see the, the flip-flops, whatever it's in there. But the most important thing in that box is the gospel in their own language. And so as they read the gospel, Father, as they have the gospel, share with them, Lord, I pray that they will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I pray that we will ripple effect to their families, to their villages, that we'll see a great harvest of souls through this wonderful ministry of Samaritan's Purse, Father. And thank you that we get to partner with them to reach the lostness in this world. And Father, we just uh, pray for Steve tomorrow as he goes and has this procedure done on his back. We pray you guide the doctor's hands as a, as a, vac a very sensitive area, Father, especially around the spine as they put this slit in his back and put a camera in and find where they need to put the injection. Father, lead them exactly where it needs to go. And we pray this injection works, Lord God, that it takes care of the pain that he's having. And Father, I just thank you for what you've done in his life thus far. It's been so good to see that he's a walking example of answer to prayer. Father, we know you're going to take care of him tomorrow. We know you hear our prayers, and we just pray your continued blessing upon his life and, and Sue's life as well, Father. And Lord, we just uh, pray for James, Pastor Cameron's brother. Lord, we thank you for being with him this week when he passed out twice. We know that he could have been behind the wheel. And when that happened, it would have been a whole lot worse. But Lord, you were watching over him and caring for him. I thank you they figured out what was causing him to pass out. And Lord, I just pray that, uh, that you just take care of him, Lord, and just uh, watch over him with this issue with his heart being in failure, Lord, and get him to the point where he, he can have this heart transplant. And Lord, we pray for your perfect timing in that. We pray for that surgery to go well, be glorified to you, and be pleasing to you, and there be no complications. We pray for a good recovery. And we also pray for the donor, Father. We don't know who this donor is going to be, but we know it has to come from somewhere. So we pray for their salvation, Father, that before they come to that point of death, they will trust Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, if they don't already know Jesus, Lord. And Father, we just uh, lift up Lee Watson and her family to, to you, Lord, and pray that you just uh, comfort them with the passing of her uncle. We thank you that he's in heaven with you. Uh, he's been healed. He's whole. He's complete. He's better off. And we praise you for that, Father, but we know he's missed. So we pray your comfort upon the Watson family. And we pray for the service tomorrow, Lord, that if there's anybody there who doesn't know Jesus as the Lord and Savior, that through the word of God that's shared, people will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. And Lord, as we continue this time of worship, may our focus be on you and just giving praise to you and glory to you and worship you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to say our choir has sung this song before, but uh, we wanted to bring it back this morning because in the things that we're to be thankful for, one of the biggest things that we should be thankful for every day is that Jesus is coming back. So let's be thankful for that. thought that the world has kind of lost its way mm -hmm. crazy as it seems yeah I know it's gonna be okay okay it doesn't scare me it's temporary there's something better we got forever and it won't be long cause we know our help is on the way 
the way. So keep your head up. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. No, don't you give up. No, no. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. And when the world gets complicated, we're going to keep on celebrating. Because we know. Yeah, we know. We gotta stay awake cause nobody knows the day or time, no. The trumpet's gonna blow and the skies are gonna open wide, oh yeah. He's coming for us, just like he told us. It's been a long wait, but there's a new day and we're gonna sing hallelujah when the King arrives. Oh, you know you gotta keep your head up. Aren't you thankful for the promise that Jesus is coming back? Amen. This is not all there is. Uh, better days coming when Jesus takes us home to be with him in glory for all eternity. Take your Bibles and turn with me to Romans chapter 8 is where we are this morning. Romans chapter 8. We're taking a pause from the First Corinthians study as we focus on Thanksgiving this week. And so we're in Romans chapter 8. I've got a pop quiz for you. Didn't you always hate it when the teacher said that when you walked into class? You know, you come in, you have a good day, and they just ruin the day. You know, I got a pop quiz for you. And, uh, you know, if I ask this question, some of y'all may know the answer. Some of y'all may not know the answer that I'm looking for. I'm looking for a certain answer. But what if I was to ask you, when is Thanksgiving Day? Now, some people would say, yeah, well, you can't really know because it's not the same date every year. You know, it changes every year. In case you didn't know that, it does change every year. And some people say, well, it's a Thursday in Thanksgiving. Hopefully you know it's this Thursday in Thanksgiving. I mean, Thursday in November. It's this Thursday in November. But that's not really the answer I'm looking for. The answer I'm looking for was the original Thanksgiving Day. The official Thanksgiving Day, the original Thanksgiving Day, goes all the way back to 1789 with President George Washington when he proclaimed November 26 as a day of Thanksgiving. That's when it all began. That's when it started in America. And after that, Thanksgiving continued to be celebrated as a nation, you know, in different states and different days and everything like that until President Abraham Lincoln in 1863 made a proclamation saying this, and I quote, the whole American people to observe a special day of Thanksgiving on the last Thursday of November every year. 
So as a nation, President Lincoln said, let's get together as one and give thanks back to God. And ever since then, presidents have given proclamations to make Thanksgiving the fourth Thursday of November every year as Thanksgiving Day. But as a child of God, as a believer, as a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, Thanksgiving Day is not just on a Thursday like this Thursday, November 23rd. Thanksgiving Day should be every day. Because we have so much to be thankful for. We should have Thanksgiving Day every day of our lives. And, and, you know, I want to share with you this morning three truths of things. There's more than this three, but three truths I want to focus in on this morning of things that we can be thankful for every single day of our life. No matter if you're having a good day, no matter if you're having a bad day, no matter the circumstances you're in, no matter what you're going through in life, these are things that we can be thankful for every single day of our life. And so there's three truths here that, that I want us to think about and see, are we really putting this into our life? Are we practicing this in our life every day of things we are thankful for? So here's the first thing. Number one, we are thankful, we should be thankful every day that God is for us. God is for us. Look what it says there in verse 31 of Romans chapter 8. What then, shall we, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Actually, in the, the, a better translation of that, you may have this in your translation, instead of the word if, a better word is since. So it would read this. Since God is for us, who can be against us? Now, this, Paul's writing this in such a way, this is a rhetorical question that no, no matter how you ask the question, you have this definitive answer that's always the same. Since God is for us, since God is for his people, nobody can be against us. And as you study the Bible, you see this lesson, you see this principle all throughout the Bible. You find one of the greatest lessons taught in the Bible is this. God plus one makes a majority. God plus one makes a majority. I mean, just think about all through the Bible how we see this lived out in the lives of God's people. Think about Joseph. Joseph learned this lesson when he was in prison in Genesis, didn't he? That God plus one makes a majority. Think about David. When David faced Goliath, he wasn't out there by himself. He was out there with God. God plus one makes majority. Or Daniel, when Daniel was in the lion's den, he learned this lesson. Or what about Paul and Peter when they were in prison? They learned this lesson. You see, God is for his people. How can we be so confident that God is for us in the day and age we're living? I mean, think about all that we go through today in our society as Christians and what we face as Christians. How can you say with confidence that God is for us every single day with what we have to live with every single day in the world in which we live? Well, look at verse 32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now this verse is really, it's an argument of the, from the greater to the lesser. I mean, think about it this way. If God gave his son, if God the Father gave Jesus Christ, before we ever knew Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, what will he give us now? Or if God the Father gave Jesus Christ while we were still sinners... And now that we do know Jesus Christ and we're, we're considered to be children of God, sons and daughters of God, what will he not give us that we need in our life? And here's the point. If God will offer you his son, if the Father will offer you Jesus Christ, there is certainly nothing else that he won't give us that we need to live our life for him. He is for us. He wants to help us. He wants to be there and guide us. I mean, think about what God has given us through Jesus Christ. I mean, we all have that same problem that we're born with. That's the problem of sin. And the Bible tells us there's a punishment of our sin. That is what we call hell. That's what the Bible calls hell. And that's not a place to party and have a good time as the world says it is. It's not. Hell is a place of eternal torment. Think about the worst pain you've ever been in. That doesn't even touch the torment of hell. That's what hell is. And the Bible says that's a punishment for our sins. But God loved you so much that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, in this world. Jesus lived a perfect, sinless life. He never sinned. And Jesus went to that cross of Calvary. And on that cross of Calvary, he paid the punishment for your sin and for my sin and for the sin of all mankind so we wouldn't have to. Yes, he died and yes, he was buried, but he rose three days later showing that he's the son of God, proving that he's the son of God. He came to do and to offer you forgiveness and offer you everlasting life. And proving that God has accepted that payment for your sin. But that is not automatic in your life. You've got to make a choice to receive that into your life. 
You do that by asking Jesus to come into your life to, to forgive you your sins. And you trust in who Jesus is as God's Son and what He's done for you. And ask Him to be your Savior. That means that He has saved you from the penalty of your sins. And you ask Him to be your Lord. That means you make a decision that you're going to live your life for Him. This is what God has done for us. This shows how God is for us. He gave His very Son for us so we can have forgiveness of sins, so we can have everlasting life. By the very fact that we know that God indeed did give Jesus for us in our greatest need, the greatest need we ever had was salvation. Do you not think that God will also give us everything we need to live our life for him? God will supply what we need because God is for us. Friend, if you, if you come to that point in life where you have turned from your sins and you have to ask Jesus to come into your life to be your Savior and Lord, you get what you need from God. He will supply it in your life. If God gave you his son, he will give you what you need because God is for you. God wants you to do what he has created you to do, the purpose he has for your life, and he's going to supply what you need because God is for you. I mean, think about it. That is truly something to be thankful for. In a world that we live in where so many people are against us, where so many people are just looking out for themselves and doesn't, don't, they don't care about you, they don't care about what you're going through, they just care about themselves and think the world revolves on themselves. Friend, God is for you. I don't know about you, but that's something to be thankful for every day. I'm thankful every day that God is for me. Have you realized that in your life? That God is for you? Have you come to the point in your life where you've asked Jesus to come into your life to be your Savior and Lord, to forgive you of your sins? It's all possible because God's for you. Now, here's the second thing we should be thankful for. Number two, God defends us. Not only is God for us, but number two, God defends us. Look at verse 33. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Notice that phrase there, bring a charge. In the Greek language, it's, it's one word there, and it's a legal term. And literally, it means to indict or to bring a formal accusation against someone. So Paul is asking, who is the one that's going to bring an indictment? Who is the one that's going to formally accuse the children of God? Well, if you know the Word of God, you know the one who does that. His name is Satan. He's known as the great accuser in, in Revelation. As a matter of fact, Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 says this about Satan. The accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night. That's what Satan does, is he accuses us. He, he brings an accusation against us. He indicts us. Satan spends a lot of time, think about it this way, Satan spends a lot of time in the courtroom of God as a prosecuted attorney trying to condemn us for the times that we fail, trying to condemn us for the times that we do wrong. But the truth of the matter is, is when Satan brings an accusation against us and says, look at Dave, he failed. Look at Dave, he blew it this week. You know what? He's right about me. Because I do blow it. Because I do fail. Even after you become a follower of Christ, we still sin, don't we? We still do wrong. We still fail God. I mean, think about your life this past week. Have you had at least one thought this week that you should not have had? Have you said something to someone or said something about someone that you should not have said? Have you not done something this week that you should have done? We all fail, don't we? We all sin. And the bad news is that when hell's district attorney, if you will, Satan himself, brings an accusation against us that say, look at Dave, he failed again, he blew it again, he's right about me, because I do fail and I do blow it. But what he doesn't understand is that this case is fixed. Look at what it says in verse 34. He who, is, who, excuse me, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Now think about this courtroom setting. We have the, 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 the prosecuted attorney is Satan. He's, he's accused us of all these things. So we need a defense attorney. You know who our defense attorney is? Well, let me share it with you. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 says this. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, listen, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. There in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 it tells us who our defense attorney is. In the Greek language, that word advocate there, it literally means legal counsel. It means defense attorney. Friend, if you're a child of God, if you know Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, Jesus is your defense attorney. And no one can go up against Jesus, not even Satan. You may be thinking right now, you know, that sounds pretty good. You know, I might have a shot of beating this case. If Jesus is my defense attorney, that's pretty good. But you know what? It gets even better. I want you to notice who the judge is in this courtroom as well. John chapter 5, verse 22 says this, For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. 
Do you get the picture here? Our defense attorney, Jesus Christ, is also the judge. I think it's rigged for our, our benefit, isn't it? You know, the case is fixed for our benefit. Jesus, God, defends us. He stands for us. Do you know why, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, that you never have to fear prosecution of the devil? Because your case has been settled out of court. Jesus died for your sins like I talked about earlier. He paid for your sins. And his resurrection is proof that God the Father accepted payment of, your, of, the, of that payment for your sins. Your case has been settled out of court. That's why even on my worst of days, my worst of days as a Christian, when I blow it, when I fail, when I fall short, I can still be thankful because I know God defends me. And I will blow it. I do, I do blow it. I'm thankful every day that God defends me. Have you realized who's on your side? Have you realized who your defense attorney is, who the judge is? Are you thankful every day that God defends you? Now here's the th final truth that we should be thankful for. Number three, God loves us. I want you to see how God loves us. Look at verse 35 there through verse 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor, <clears throat> excuse me, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you see how much God loves you? One pastor put it this way. He said, have you ever thought about that, that in salvation there's, there's math equations? And here's how he explained it. He said, God came to us as sinners and added grace to our lives. He then subtracted the sin from our lives. He then multiplied forgiveness throughout our lives. And there could be no division of our life from his life. So get the picture here. You could never do anything so bad to make God love you any less than he loves you right now. He will love you the same. Now that's not a license to go out there and do all the bad stuff you want to do. That's not, that's not what we mean here. And you can never do anything so good that he will love you any more than he loves you right now. God's love is as hard for us sometimes to wrap the, our mind around. And notice what it says here. It says nothing can separate us from the love of God. Friend, if you've never heard this or you never realize that God loves you so much, tremendously so much, it's beyond any love you've ever experienced. And he's proven his love for us. By sending Jesus to die for us. This is how much God loves you. And it has a great effect on our life. That's why Paul says in verse 37, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That Greek phrase, in the Greek the phrase more than conquerors, it's a phrase that literally means a super conqueror. You know? And it comes from two Greek words. One Greek word you're familiar with. Anybody ever heard of Nike? You know? Maybe you got some Nike clothing on or shoes on right now. I don't know. But Nike, it means victor or victory. And the second Greek word is the word where we get our word hyper from, over and above. So this is the, the picture of a super conqueror. Someone that is over and above as a victor, that lives in victory. What's the difference between just a regular conqueror and a super conqueror? A regular conqueror is someone who fights a battle and wins. A super conqueror is someone who knows the battle is won before it's even fought. Before they have to, fight, before they have to do any fighting, the battle has already been won for them. You say, how is that possible? Because the battle has already been won through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ fought the battle for our sin on the cross of Calvary, and he won. And therefore, God makes us super conquerors, that we can live in victory every day. We don't have to give in to temptation to sin. We can live in victory because God loves us this much. I am thankful that God loves me so much that there's nothing, there's no one that can ever separate me from his love. There's nothing I could do to separate me from his love. There's nobody that can separate me from his love. And because God loves me this much, I don't have to live in defeat to temptation. I don't have to live in defeat to, to sin every day. I can live in victory because God has made me a super conqueror. Have you realized that in your life? Have you realized how much God loves you? Are you thankful every day that God loves you? We all understand that this life we live on this earth is hard. I get it. It's not easy. 
And it seems with each passing day, this gets more difficult, doesn't it? I mean, you have good days, and sometimes it seems you have more bad days than good days. But even on your worst of days, it ought to be Thanksgiving Day. Because you can know, and you can love, and you can serve a God that is for you. A God that defends you, and that a God that loves you no matter what. Let me just ask you this morning, do you know that God? I'm not just talking about head knowledge. A lot of people say they know God. I'm not just talking about a belief that there is a God. I'm talking about having a personal relationship with Almighty God through Jesus Christ, His Son, and doing what I talked about earlier when I said Jesus came and died for your sins on the cross of Calvary. That you've asked Him to come into your life and to forgive you your sins and to be your Savior and Lord. This is how you personally know God. Friend, if you haven't made that decision, I want to encourage you to do so today. Whether you're sitting in this room or whether you're watching us online, do it today. In just a moment, we're going to have a time of decision. So we're going to stand, we're going to sing, and this is a time for you to decide what you're going to do with what you've been presented with God's Word. And I'll be down here at the front, and I'll be glad to talk with you about how to make that decision if you have questions. But friend, if you've done that, praise God that you know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. You personally know God. But are you living out a thankful life every day? Remember, stop and think about what God has blessed us with every day. These are just three things, three major things, But there's so much more, isn't there? Do you have Thanksgiving Day every day? Not just on the holiday, but every day of your life. And if you don't, why not start today? Friend, it can radically change your life. It can change your attitude. You ever been around someone that's just grumpy? You don't want to be around them all the time? Friend, you start living a grumpy life, you're going to live an isolated life because nobody wants to be around you. But I guarantee you, you start living a thankful life, it's going to change your attitude. It's going to change your perspective on life. And people are going to see there's something different about you, and it's going to get contagious. It's going to spread to them. It's going to be a witness to others. And it's going to bring glory to God. So every day, not just this Thursday or next year, Thanksgiving holiday, every day are you living a thankful life. Father, we are grateful for you. We are thankful for you, and we give you praise for who you are. And Lord, we thank you that very briefly we've been reminded that every day should be Thanksgiving Day for us. You have blessed us so much. You have given us so much and done so much for us. And we have just hit the tip of the iceberg in Romans 8 this morning. But Father, I pray for anyone here that has never made that decision to personally know you through Jesus Christ, your Son. That as we stand and have this time of decision, as we sing, they'll step out of that aisle and they'll say, Dave, I need to do that. Will you help me? Will you talk with me? Will you pray with me? I'll do whatever I can to help them, Lord, to lead them to you, Jesus. They can even do it right there in their pew or right where they're sitting and watching this online by asking forgiveness of their sins and believing in who you are, Jesus, and asking them to, you to come into their life to be their Savior and be their Lord. And Father, we give you praise that you've done that in so many lives in this room. And Father, for those of us that have made that decision, I pray that we will honestly examine our life and see, are we living thankful lives today? And Father, if we're not, we'll make a change. Stop looking at the negative. Stop being so pessimistic, being so grumpy. But see the blessings. Like we sang earlier, truly count the blessings. And we've we've talked about, we talked about four this morning. These three and the choir sang about one. Jesus is coming back. You are so good to us. And may we change our way of thinking about things and live Thanksgiving every day, Father. So whatever decision needs to be made in this time, may you be honored and glorified. And we give you the praise for it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we stand and sing, you respond as the Spirit of God is leading you this morning. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender loss like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless. Me now, my Savior, I come to thee. 
I need thee every hour. Say thou nearby, temptations lose their power when thou art nigh. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to I need thee every hour, enjoy your pain, come quickly and abide, for life is vain. I need thee, oh I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh bless me now. I need thee every hour, teach me thy will, thy promise so rich in me fulfill. I need thee, oh I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh bless me now my Savior I come to thee I need thee every hour most holy one oh make me thine indeed thy blessed son I need thee oh I need Every hour I need me, oh bless me now my Savior, I come to Thee. Amen. Be seated for just a moment. We're not done worshiping. We're going to continue on with baptism. Pastor Cameron's going to come now and make an announcement. Or make announcements, not a, but many announcements. So if you're, uh, Alyssa and Jared, I'm going to ask them to join me in the back. And if you're on the baptism team, y'all can go ahead and start moving and getting everything ready for baptism. So y'all just hang out after he's done with the announcements. We're going to continue with worship with baptism. Well, if you're a guest, I do want to remind you to head over to our Welcome Center after the baptism this morning. They do have a gift there for you. A reminder, Christmas play practice continues today at 4 p.m. So all kids and teenagers and adults are invited uh, to help out with the play. And uh, just join us as we share the story of Christmas about that play. It's going to be um, coming up soon. There will be no practice next Sunday, November 26th, so you can spend time with your families for Thanksgiving. Men, join us for our Men of Iron Bible study tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. We're always going to be having a great time of fellowship and Bible study. And ladies, at that same time, the women will be praying in the sanctuary. So if you want to come and join them uh, for an uplifted time, please do so. And I just reminded, this Tuesday is our covered dish Thanksgiving meal that starts at 6.30 p.m. It's always a great time to celebrate uh, Thanksgiving as a family of God. So just bring enough food for you and your family or any guests that you're bringing. And I will have our Thanksgiving worship service right after the meal. So there will be no service on Wednesday. Uh, so join us Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. And the fun bunch is uh, ready to go on our next trip. We just came back from the Fruitcake Factory this week, and we all made it out alive. That was a crowded place, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Um, but uh, we're going to be heading out on Friday, December the 8th for uh, dinner and to see Christmas lights. And that starts at 5 p.m. on Friday, December the 8th. So if you'd like to sign up for that, there's a sign-up sheet over in the Welcome Center. And please go ahead and sign up for that. And ladies, if you're going uh, to the 2024 Women of Joy Conference, there's a $25 deposit. And it's due by next Sunday, the 26th. And you can make those checks out to Red Mountain Baptist Church. And if you have any questions about that, you can see Jen Show. And if you have a prayer request or a praise that you would like to share with the church, please contact Deb Terry. And also, if you want to be added to our prayer, our prayer chain, you can contact Deb as well. Uh, you can email her at redmountainprayers at gmail.com, redmountainprayers at gmail.com, or you can text her. Uh, if it's an urgent prayer request that you'd like to get out right away, please text her and let her know. And you can find Deb's number in the church news sheet as well. So you guys just hang on for a minute, and we'll be having a baptism soon.
And this is something else we have much to be thankful for is when we see God change people's lives. And they give testimony of that through baptism. So we have a, a husband and wife coming, uh, Alyssa and Jarrett Brooks. This is uh, Alyssa Brooks first. Um, they're both excited about what God is doing in, in their lives. And, uh, and so I just wanted you to know what God's doing and be obedient to Christ's command to be baptized, but give testimony of what God has done in their life. And they're excited to be here today. So Alyssa, do you know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior? Yes. Amen. Alyssa, my sister, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Dying to self and raised to walk in newness of life. Amen. <laughs> And this is her husband, Jarrett Brooks, and he too is excited to know Jesus as a Savior. Do you know Jesus as your Savior, don't you, brother? Yes. Amen. So, and excited for you to know what God is doing in his life, and I'm just excited for, for this dear couple. So, uh, Jarrett, my brother, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dying to self, and raised to walk in newness of life. Amen. <laughs> Ain't God good? Amen. Amen. We're so thankful to see how God is blessing here at Red Mountain, to see lives change for all eternity, to see people come through these baptisms of waters. This doesn't save you. Jesus saves you. But this is just a testimony and a profession of what Jesus has already done in their life. And we're excited to, to celebrate with them. So when you see them, you congratulate them and tell them how excited you are. Yet something else to be thankful for, for what God is doing. And he's changing lives every single day. And our heart's desire, our prayer, is if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your life will be changed by Jesus today. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful and thankful for who you are. We give you praise for how you change our lives. And yet here's two more examples of what you've done in Jared's life and Alyssa's life. And Father, we thank you for their excitement, for their joy of just knowing you as the Lord and Savior. And their testimony today that you have radically changed their lives and they now are children of God. And Father, we thank you for their obedience to your command to be baptized. We thank you for this profession they made today. And Father, we pray your continued blessing upon them as husband and wife, but also as our brother and sister, Lord. And may we help them grow. May they help us grow and be used of you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.